Great. All right, once again, welcome. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're glad that you guys are joining with us today. It's a beautiful morning. We praise God for His mercy and His grace. I know some of us have gone through some challenges this week, but we're so thankful to God for His constant um, providence, His love, His grace. It's like the rain in the, in the afternoon uh, every single time. And I've seen the plants growing. I have plants from the backyard. I saw it was just like this. And after this couple of days of rain, it grew like this. I was like, how did it happen? In just a matter of two, three days of rain. I I'm just marvelous. I was looking at the plants. I was like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. People look at me like, this is a crazy lady talking to the plant. I was thankful to God for his grace. It's just like that. And it's amazing, really. When I use like the regular water, it doesn't seem to do so much with it. But when the rain from heaven pour down, it's different. It caused a lot of changes with how they look. They look so full and fertile and growing. And I just praise God. So there's a lot of things to be thankful for. And indeed with that, let's start off with prayer. Let me ask Sister Amy to start off with prayer. Okay, let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for the rain, the sunshine, and thank you for the gift of life. And thank you for the Sabbath that we can rest from the days of labor. And Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit as we are going to learn more about you and open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive the message that you have for us today. Forgive us from our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, let me share screen. One sec. Uh, let's get started after.
let's see let me go in this platform see if we can make it really happen Just a minute, let me do it this way, see if that would work. Okay, let me just go live through here, let's do that. Okay. Good morning, Coyelices. Good morning. Yes. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, it's a long verses here from 1 to 32, but we will go ahead and start off with, they're all good, <laughs> I'm debating which get to start, <laughs> let's start with 17 then, brother Ron, let's start with 17, you go, yeah, but I don't have my Bible with me, oh you don't have it, okay, you just listen no. then, okay. So brother Ron is in camp right now, Camp Kalakwa. It's too cold. A little bit. How, how much temperature there, brother Ron? Oh, I know it's probably in the sixties. Oh, okay, that was super cold. Okay, good. All right. So we start up with seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Sister Arms, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Uh, brother Enrique, twenty-three to the fourteen will be mine. At the arms, right? 26, 27, and that's it. Let's, let's just off on this to 27. Okay. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 19. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness and greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful loss. Okay. 23 to the 45. To be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Kaiolosis 26, 27, 28. Okay. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to eat to give him to give him who has need amen all right so this is an instruction of how to live a righteous life christian life and if you start off the whole chapter itself is really good actually you start up with being a prisoner of Christ, you are called to live what? A life, a holy life, worthy of calling that you have received. So since we received Jesus Christ, there's something that needs to be changed. When you are such a person likes to lie, stop lying, okay? When you have a person that is so impatient, then now you become patient. If you're a kind of person who's very rash and harsh, then you become gentle. And then if you are a person that no care in the past, now that you have met Jesus, you become more concerned of others rather, uh, rather than yourself. There is something 
that I've learned as far as with how can we truly enjoy life don't put the the magnifying glass on yourself put it to others and you realize the value of or your purpose why you are here that god has created you and it's very impactful the more you do it the more you have that joy that you cannot explain like why i feel this way lord it's just a beautiful thing now as there is one body and one spirit just you were called to one hope you're called with one faith one god father of all here do not continue on sinning i tell you this and insist you in the lord that you must no longer live as gentiles do what the gentiles do in the futility of the minds and we're talking about the minds again well, i mentioned this during the midweek um, prayer meeting that we had that when it comes to daily surrendering to christ it takes our decision making the higher functioning of our body which is the frontal lobe of the brain many among professed christians many including probably some of us here or me myself is you know we profess christian and then we make mistakes because of rush decisions not asking god to help us out with certain things okay the title of this morning is captivated what does it it real, real, what's the relation that we're talking about here because if your brain is captivated to the love of god this will do the thing that i have mentioned that you know you abandon your old self and be captivated by the love of god not captivated by the things of the world what's in the world all about pride okay it's about me 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 it's about oh do i look good you know in tech talk and facebook do i look good i do you know it's about self stop my putting magnifying glass on yourself and put magnifying glass at the cross of jesus the cross of jesus christ in your life and you'll see the difference big difference now what is the difference between a gentile put the futility in their minds entertaining all of this nonsense and those first people that are called for righteousness okay in 18 very clear they are darkened in their understanding what well, understanding here talking about the frontal lobe again understanding the mind and separated from the life of god because of what ignorance now it makes me think ignorance so uh, that means they don't know at all <laughs> they probably received some light they're just so hard-headed they refuse. They know that Jesus Christ was the Redeemer. They know it. But then they refuse that truth. They darken their mind and understanding and they harden their hearts. Ooh. So the mind is darkened, the hearts is as hard as a stone, okay? lost sensitivity look at the 19 here they have given themselves over what sensuality indulgence in every kind of impurity and god hates it and they are full of greed i'm talking about self my friends so about self you put magnification in yourself however it's not the kind of life that you now learn from christ when you heard about Christ and were taught in him with his love and captivated by his love in all truth in Jesus Christ, you no longer be the same. What it says here, put off your old self, which is corrupt, deceitful in its desire. Now, it's a high time for us to evaluate, Lord, do I have all of this deceit even now? Do I have this 
you know, my character, my old self, my character like this, Lord God. You said in your word that we should put off our old self, that we should take out all of these deceitful desires made new in Christ, captivated by his love in the attitude of your minds again mention about the mind it's when when the bible repeatedly saying something is because it has given an emphasis great importance and when it comes to salvation of men what could hold is the decision making it's our brain so here in your mind the attitude is an attitude of mind, the attitude of openness to the love of God, that God will change you in your character and you're willing to do it because you love God. You're captivated by the love of God. To put on the new self created to be like God. Now, let's pause. Created to be like God because people may think it's, it's differently or they might put meaning differently with this one remember our god created us we're created beings to be like god it means in character continue on it says to be like god in true righteousness and holiness ah there you go not to be like god like what the enemy lucifer was in the past he wants to be like god when you say he don't want to be like god because he wants to be worshipped too that's different here <laughs> the difference of the call here <laughs> as what Ephesians mentioned here is to be like God in righteousness and holiness now God said be holy for I am holy therefore each of you no more of the falsehood nonsense talk <laughs> we have to talk truthfully for we are members of one body if you get anger, please do not sin. How that possible, right? Because <laughs> when you're angry, blah. But you need to learn to forgive. Forgive yourself, forgive to the person also that sin against you. You need to. Otherwise, your blood pressure go high, rocketed. You might probably have heart attack or stroke. It's going to kill you. <laughs> if you're not careful with that, yes. Anger, bitterness in the heart. Oh, man. It's hard. It's hard. I have a patient just yesterday experienced such betrayal from the spouse, her own spouse, caught in the act. Okay? That's hard. It's, it's really hard because, you know, 39 years of being together, they have multiple children. I will not mention how many, but well, it's, it's, they have a lot of kids and to, to be separated all because of, you know, this unfaithfulness of the husband caught in the act. It's hard. It's painful. How will you forgive? I'm talking about forgiveness. She's angry about her husband and all things. It's hard. You see, when... The family, when Jesus is not in the family, it's hard. It would lead to something inevitable that you don't want to happen in your family. It caused bitterness, resentments, and pains, not just for her and her husband as well, but also for the children. The children, the, el the youngest one, I think is nine, 19 years old, but still, you know. It caused trauma and the pain and all of these. And, and it will be a lifetime scar, definitely, because you have trusted this person whom you love. And there you go, created something that is very painful to you as a, as a wife. And that's what happened. And, you know, like I said, it's hard when Jesus Christ is not in the family. It could happen to your family, own family, too. If you allow the enemy to be there, you don't want that. You want Jesus Christ to be in your family because that will change the character of your spouse, you, and your children. Only God can change hearts. 
that if you allow the whole family to be captivated by the love of God, all of these things going on, okay? And wholesome talk, and wholesome acts. When I say an unwholesome acts, acts that should not be done, but then you did it anyway because you just love to do it. Think of it this way. If God is calling us for righteousness and holiness, if those unwholesome talks or thoughts or acts, all of these, think of it like you're an open book before the Lord. Because it is. The God of heaven sees everything. Even before you act on it, he knows what's in your brain. He knows what you are thinking and formulating for the past couple of days. Nothing is hidden before him. So with that said, then if, if you are really true and captivated by the love of God and you really want to follow his will and his precepts, then be very mindful of what you're doing and you're thinking, of what the things that you are seeing in the television, in social media, or any platform that you're looking at or watching, think of it that God is watching you too, as if God is just right beside you. <laughs> we should be embarrassed and be shameful, right? If we have done such terrible things and wholesome acts of unrighteousness, and wholesome acts of being captivated by the enemy. You don't want that, not at all. So, because once you're into it and you, it becomes part of your habit, part of your character, you lost all the sensitivity. That's 19, verse 19. All the sensitivity that the Holy Spirit is trying to, to pull you. You're going to lose it. I have heard it. I have seen it. I have experienced it too myself. Please. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Because the worst could happen to the point that he will leave us. We don't want that. We don't want that. Because we're, we're truthfully, or how do you say that? Willfully. Willfully decline salvation. If we keep doing it that way. This will be a good discussion. I'd like to hear from Quayulis since you're unmuted. So you can get started. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let me point out something. <clears throat> it says, uh, I'm, I'm stuck on the word renewed. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a good one. It says, where is it again? 23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then it says here, put on the new man. New man. Actually, renewed new man. And I was um, thinking, not actually thinking. I'm just looking something about renewed. And um, it has the same comment as, or it has the same comment as in John 3.3, 3, which Jesus said, except a man be born again and to notice right chapter 24 is actually telling us to be good to be obedient you notice that right mm -hmm. however before he started doing this he started in in ephesians 2 8 that we are saved by grace and not by works. Is that right? Yes. Uh, you are saved by grace and not by works. Therefore, we could not boast about it. It, mm -hmm. is, not, it is the gift of God, not of mm -hmm. works, lest anyone should boast. Mm -hmm. And so many people say, oh, I'm already saved by grace. It doesn't matter what I do. And here, Paul is saying, it does, actually. It does. Because if you remember the comment that was made in verse 18, why be just Gentiles? You were alienated. 
And in order to show that you are now connected with God, you should change the ways you live. So now, if people are telling us that they don't have to behave in a different manner before they accepted Christ and after, then we can easily present these verses to, to them. But the good thing is this. Um, Paul keeps on coming back to the thought that we are not able to do it on ourselves. Putting on the mind of Christ, being renewed in the mind of Christ is always his thing. Yes, we have to, we have to project good behavior. Yes, we have to do all the good things because it is normal that when I like the word captivated, when we are so captivated by Christ, one thing that Christ asked us to do is to follow him, right? To follow him meaning to observe him in everything he does. So if he has been kind to other people, we have to kind to other people. If he started feeding other people or yeah, feeding other, other people, of course he didn't cook, but <laughs> right? if, if he says do something good like feeding other people, then if he said that, then we do that. Everything that Jesus does when we ask, when we tell him, when we tell people that we are Christians, that we are a follower of Christ, we are imitators of Christ. Everything um, that he did, we are expected to follow. And that's why but if you are stealing, do not steal anymore. Mm -hmm. Because when you see Christ, you will be inspired to work so that you'll be able to help others as well. There is a big shift for people who are actually saved by grace. That instead of being a liability to our family, instead of being a source of problem to our family, the shift changes that when we are actually saved by grace and when the Holy Spirit starts to work in our lives, they see that instead of a liability, we, can, we become a source of help to our family or to our community. Instead of a source of discouragement, now we become a source of encouragement. All of this happens because all of this happened because we are now captivated by Christ. And it's nice when it when you mentioned that you put the magnifying glass on others, and then you also put the magnifying glass on Christ. We will be more amazed and we will be more captivated as we look through him with the magnifying glass. And the more we look at him and the more we are captivated, you see the cycle now that the Holy Spirit renews us, renew us every day. But this is not a one-time event. It is an everyday event that should happen in our lives. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's not a one-time event. You hear that straight from Kyolysis? So when you say not one-time event, what we're trying to formulate here, it's a lifestyle, my friends. It's part of your character. So one thing, like 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 creating, like say, for example, like, you know, if you want to change your diet. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> At the beginning, it's difficult, but when your taste buds is getting used to the taste already, now you don't like the ones that you liked before. Ask me, because I used to eat barbecue chicken almost every day way back in the Philippines. Now I, I, don't, I don't crave for it anymore because it's not part of my taste buds. It's not part of the way I do now. It's become my lifestyle. So it's been a while since I eaten chicken and beef and all that stuff. 2008, praise God. But it takes commitment. It takes a, a lifetime choice to say no. I'm gonna do this. This is this is what I would intend to do. 
If this is what God wants me to do, then I'll do it. It's just an example, okay? Changing your lifestyle. Lifestyle, heaven lifestyle. Amen. Thank you so much, Keolisis. Brother Enrique, I'd like to hear from you. Hey, good morning to all. Um, uh, Paul, the book of Ephesians is pretty deep, uh, but it's one thing that, that I constantly see with Paul. And this is one of the things that Paul makes it a point to remind everyone. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he tells the Corinthian church, as such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Then if you go to Titus, he tells Titus the same thing to tell the people that he's going to be guiding. He says in verse five, not by works of righteousness, which you, we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the mind of the spirit. Then he tells the same thing to the Ephesians back in chapter two. He says, and you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we were all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and were of the mind, and were by nature children of the wrath, just as others. Paul, if you look at, if you study the way Paul preaches, he always preaches like Jesus. Jesus preached wheat, but he also preached tares. He preached foolish, but he also preached wise. And one of the constant reminders that Jesus and Paul does the same thing is he constantly reminds us that when we come to Christ, we're new individuals. One of the biggest problems that we have is that we don't believe that. See, we don't fail because we have to. We fail because we don't trust God when God says you're a new creature. Paul constantly reminds us, and he does it again in verse 23, be renewed in the spirit of the mind that you put on the new man. He says, verse 22, put off concerning your former conduct. Because one of the biggest things, one of the biggest problems that I see and I hear from many uh, individuals who go to church is that they're always talking about weakness. They're always talking about difficulty. They're always talking about challenges. But Christ was an, uh, Paul was an individual who always emphasized we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Here throughout all of this, Paul is again, just taking the fact and reminding them of what a Gentile was, but he's also reminding them that that's who they once were. You know, a Gentile has no understanding, has their understanding darkened, but what, for what reason? What, what, is the, what is their problem? They're alienated from the life of God. In other words, they refuse to make God their life. And because of the ignorance that is in them, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Without God, there is no wisdom. So that's why they're in ignorance. Paul constantly continues to say, you're not one of them. That's not who you are today. And if you look at verse 27, he reminds them again, nor give place to the devil. The devil no longer has control over you. And this is one of the things that I think we wrestle with more than anything is the fact that we don't want to give up the old man. It's like we want to keep holding on to him like a crutch, you know, just in case if I falter, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm weak. Well, no, no, you know, it's just, no. Nah, it's, what God is saying to us, you're new creatures. And you should think, this is why the Bible says, renewing of the mind. What, what is that mind? As a man thinketh, so he is. If you think you're a failure and you think you're weak, well, then guess what? You're going to be a failure and you're going to be weak. If you think that you're an individual who can't overcome sin, well, then guess what? You're not going to overcome sin because as a man thinketh, so he will be. And one of the things that I love about Paul is that Paul constantly edifies the people by reminding them that's who you were. That's not who you are today. And one of the things is that, yes, we can talk about what God saved us from, but we can't focus on that. You know, when I came to the Lord, I had all sorts of situations in my life, but that's not who I am today. And I don't focus on any of those things. The reason I don't focus on any of those things is that that's, that's the old man. He died. He no longer exists. The person that exists now is a child of God, the individual being guided by the Holy Spirit. 
And that's why, man, he counsels you who still, still, still no longer. Why? Because you're not that person before. You know, I was a thief. I went to jail. So I know what Paul here is saying. But that's not who I am. I don't consider stealing. And what Paul is reminding us and all of them is you're no longer a thief. So you shouldn't be stealing. You're no longer a fornicator. So you shouldn't be fornicating. That's not who you are today. And we oftentimes miss the big picture and continue to emphasize and focus on who we once were. Instead of realizing, if you go all the way back and Brother Yuli brought it up that we're saved by grace, but we need to understand very clearly what this grace, what, what is God talking about that you're saved by grace? If you go back to Ephesians, beginning chapter two, beginning with first verse four, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive. So the grace of God makes you alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. In other words, when you're made alive, old man dies. When you resurrect, that old man stays where he is. This is why if you go to Romans 6, Paul explains very clearly, the old man dies, but you are reborn as a new individual. So that is what the grace is. You're made alive with Christ. Now the grace, you, you don't, you don't go around with your old form of things because the grace of God is not an old man. The grace of God is not a sinner. It's the righteous thing. So now when you're with right, now when the grace of God is working in you, that's how you're living. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. But then you got to add nine and 10 to it. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. That means, man, that this is not something that I, this is not a change that I brought upon myself, but it is a change that I can accept and I can walk with. I can recognize very clearly, man, that it is nothing, it, nothing that I did, but I recognize very clearly, man, that I'm not that person because God is the one who made me alive. For we are his work creation created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What does it mean beforehand? Well, this is what I was created in his image to begin with. I walked away and I did the foolishness that I did. But when I come here to the Lord, he says, I have works. They're prepared for you. This is who you're going to be now. And these works begin to be, to be uh, fulfilled in my life. And I can fulfill them in my life because I know I'm not the old man anymore. He's dead. I don't have to wrestle whether, whether I need to go to church today or not. I'm going to church. It's not a wrestle. I don't have to wrestle with alcohol or drugs. That's the old man. He's no longer there. The works that God has done in my heart is I focus on his righteousness. And that's the only thing that I'm focusing on. So when you look at what Paul is talking about, again, he's bringing the two sides. But we need to recognize and realize that the old man is dead and the new man has arisen. And we need to keep walking in that new man and forget that the old man, this is what Paul says, I keep focused on the high calling. I'm, whatever's behind me is behind me. What's behind me? The old man, he's dead, he's no longer there. So I'm focusing on the high calling of the Lord. This is why he says, man, don't grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. It doesn't say for whom you may be sealed, you are sealed. The moment you've given yourself to Christ, that's the moment you begin to walk to heaven. You are saved at that very moment. You are justified. At justification, you are saved and from here on in, all God is doing is what he says in Thessalonians, he's preserving you blameless. He's keeping you in that path of righteousness. And you just have to believe very clearly that that's where I'm headed. I can't focus on who I was, man. I've already apologized. I've already repented and God said you're forgiven. As far as I'm concerned, that is done. Only focus I have now, focus on what God is doing in my life today. Focus on who he is in my life and who the new man is because I don't have to tolerate, nor do I have to sit on. That's why he says, don't give no place to the devil. The devil is an accuser. The word accuser means to remind. So the devil loves to remind me of who I once was, but I love to remind him, I'm not that person today because of Christ. I am not that person. That's who I was. You have me in control. Yeah, hey, good job on it. But now I serve a risen God. Now I serve one who is greater than you. So that's who I was. That's who you want me to be. That's not who I am today. And I don't have to follow your counsel. I don't have to give heed to your words because today I am a servant of the most high.
Amen. Beautifully said, Brother Enrique. I love it. Um, it's really true. Our brain is amazing. Whatever you put in there, it becomes who you are. So the so is the man think it, then so he will be. Uh, if you think of that you're not forgiven by God, that you are weak, that you are this and that, then it will become you. <laughs> it's powerful. I can tell you, there was a patient of mine told me that his her yeah his friend he's very depressed just want to die just want to die he didn't even even do anything with it just the brain the mind is thinking keep thinking i want to die i want to die guess what two days after she said that she died the brain is powerful it is very powerful this is one i would say a gift greatest gifts that god has given us is the endowment power of choice that's decision making whatever you put in your brain you become who you are if you believe that god is forgiven you and have cleaned you and put a new armor in you the armor of righteousness then believe it hundred percent no doubt that you can overcome sin that you can overcome temptation because god is truly living alive in you that's exactly what brother enrique is saying and it's really true believe in that he will work wonderful and mighty things beyond what you can imagine it's powerful beautiful thank you thank you uh sister arms i know you have said everything already <laughs> our brothers <laughs> but anyway it's just um what comes to my mind is that like, it's just like when we have our old clothes that we wore, our favorite ones, you know, but then when you take shower, you shower and then you're clean. You don't want to go back to that old clothes anymore. It's been stained and all those stuff, right? So after you shower, you're going to put on a new clothes because those are dirty. But then sometimes it's like, oh, I still like that clothes. I'm going to wear it. But it is already smell or something like that so all you have to put it in the put it in the laundry so you can see it but also in our lives as well you know as uh, so what brother Enrique has said and brother Yuli like old oh man uh you know once you you are born again you know and you accept Jesus you you follow Jesus already that old man died already but then sometimes like you will think like, oh, I still, in our mind, we have our mind. God gave us our mind. You know, sometimes we resurrect that old man. Like, oh, I still, I'm so comfortable with that old man there. I mean, I, I enjoyed those life. But no, once we, it's a decision. You know, it's a decision when we follow Jesus. But then, yeah, it's still, that's why it's a struggle sometimes. Because like, you keep like resurrecting those thoughts in your mind. Like, I, I, I like those things. The darling sense that you have in your life, your favorite things. So that's why sometimes it's a struggle. But then, yes, God gives, a, gives us the strength. God gives us the, the will. And then God gives us the choice as well. So it's, it's up to us. But God is, you know, that's why we have to focus on him and his word. Because it's so easy to be swayed with those things before you know just like me like i'm still struggling like when i i look at my phone and then like my attention is diverted but then like lord i need to focus on you you know so like because like when i look at this entertainment even just little things like little and inter little entertainments then it it took a lot of my time so if you just okay i'm just gonna listen to this uh to this sermon then that will be good because it will feed you. So um, God gives us the choice. And then he gives us the strength to do the things that he wants us to do as well. Sometimes it's so hard, but it, he is there to help us. Amen. Beautiful. Everyone have said their part. Um, Ulysses mentioned about the newness, a new created being. You are uh, saved by grace, not by works. Um, Brother Enrique mentioned about the power of decision making, the power of the brain to really be captivated by God. And if you are a new person, then old self is gone 100% completely. And Sister Arms have mentioned about a very good uh, illustration of when you're done showering, you want to 
don't want to put the old clothes back. No, it's disgusting, right? <clears throat> you don't want to do it again. <clears throat> so the same thing also with our spiritual walk with God. All of these things <clears throat> needs even, like to even love God back is a gift. Because in, in reality, we're carnal in nature. We love to just magnify ourselves and not God, right? That's us. But Ellen White have really mentioned a very good um, counsel that instead of focusing us magnifying ourselves, we have to magnify the cross of Jesus Christ, his love for you, that you be captivated in all things that you do, all because you love God. You're motivated to do going to Sabbath, going to midweek, waking up in the early morning of the Sabbath hours to listen to Sabbath morning manna, it's because you're captivated by the love of God. It's all about growing, growing, growing for yourself in the knowledge of God and getting to know him more as your personal savior. And like what Sister Amy mentioned, is very powerful at the end. She mentioned about social media, of how it entertains you. This is a trick from the enemy. Instead of spending quality time with God, we're being amused and captivated with something else rather than spending quality time with God. And how many of us are victims of that? Sure, right? Next thing you know, you spend two hours. <laughs> you thought it's just only like seconds, quick scan. Next thing you know, it's only two hours you spend with it. Be very mindful, my friends. You know, when it comes to growing in Christ, then spend quality time with God. That's how we can make emphasis and magnify, magnify the cross of Jesus Christ in our hearts if we spend time with him, listening to him. When you're driving, listen to some sermon talks, listen to some inspirational talks, um, music that will elevate the soul to God, okay? Things like this. At home, the moment you hit home, find your Bible. Find your Bible. If it's hard to even open the first page, kneel down, God. Let your Holy Spirit empower me, Lord, to give me, oh God, the enthusiasm, oh Lord God, to open up your word and, and listen to you and read your word. And it become a habit. It become part of your lifestyle and your character. And it's not by force. You just do it just because you love God. That's why it says captivated, because when you're captivated into it, it becomes just part of you. It's not burdensome. It's not force, forcefully done because you love God. Okay. All right. So let's now start with our prayer requests. Um, where's Brother Enrique? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, prayer requests. Is there arms? Uh... I think Brother Enrique might be going to to work. That's what I thought. Go ahead, mention your prayer request at the end. Okay. Yeah. Let's pray. Uh, let's continue to pray. Uh, for Brother Billy, uh, he, for his recovery. Mm -hmm. Surgery went well. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let's pray also for our pathfinders and adventurers. They're in Camp Lacqua right now for safety. And of course, blessings for them to be there as well. Uh, Kuya Yul? Let's pray for our church in general as we worship. May the Holy Spirit um, come down and convict us and use the speaker in a way that he will be on fire for the Lord, to mm -hmm. use that phrase, right? Let's pray for the different ministries, the different departments, department heads also. Let's pray for the elders as well. Mm -hmm. Pray for our families. Okay. So we'll have you to... Okay, I'll pray first and then you end up with Ulysses because at the end, already prayed a while ago. So we'll do that. All right, can you hit up? All right, Father in heaven, Lord God, thank you so much once again for giving us inspiration, oh God, this morning. Father, when we accept you as our Savior and King, help us, oh God, to truly understand what it means. 
that we will put off our old self and put the newness, the new man in us. What does it really mean? Giving up all our selfishness, our greed, self-righteousness, and our love of the world. Because you have said in your word, if anyone who's loving the world, the love of God, not in him it's a very straightforward message oh god you cannot twist it we should follow you will your leadings all the days of our lives and to do that oh god is start with one step one day at a time to really choose you over anything and prioritize you lord god in all the things that we do with all our might with all our strength with all our hearts that we'll always choose you over anything lord your precepts your directions Small decision, big decision, have you part of it, Lord God? That's righteousness. That's walking in holiness. Like Enoch walked in the past. We want to also do the same also, God, even now. Not just here, in us here, um, watching us uh, live through YouTube and Facebook, and us here too in in the Zoom meeting session, but Lord, from the youngest to the oldest across the globe, we want us all to have this Christ, love of God in our hearts and be captivated by you, Lord God, in all things. Father, you have known, oh God, the situation with clear uh, feeling. Lord, you're the only one who can do great, mighty things. We're glad one after the other, one success, but here now is the recovery part. Continue to bring healing, restoration, O oh God, of his body, as well as his soul before you, Lord God. Include also Tidensi and the kids. Give them peace, a past understanding, Lord God. And that come what may, they stay grounded with you, Lord, and be strengthened in their faith even more with these challenges, O oh God. We pray for adventurer and pathfinders. They're in Camp Kalako right now. I pray for safety. I pray, Lord God, that coming together, being there, will be a blessing for every single one of them, Lord, and they will learn more about you. Okay, Louis says also mentioned about the uh, church ministries, oh God. We ask that your Holy Spirit, oh God, be upon each one, <clears throat> because it's only through that that we can be truly uh, do the things that you want us to do, Lord God, and give you all the glory and honor. Father, I pray also for the elders of the church, oh God, uh, the leaders of the church, Pastor Mark, Pastor Dan, that you may continue, oh God, to give them wisdom and understanding that they may be able to, God, lead your people, guide your people as one accord, oh God, as one body of Christ, that we work together um, and will not take part of what we do, but we humble ourselves before you, Lord God, and commit ourselves to you as one body of Christ. Father, I pray for those who are traveling, who will be coming back, the Osana family, uh, Pastor Dan who's coming back as well, Lord. Be with each one of them. Continue to keep them safe, oh God. Give them good health and that they may be able to arrive, oh God, here praising your name because of your greatness and your goodness, oh Lord. I pray also for unspoken requests our midweek prayer list, oh God, that we have mentioned uh, last midweek, that you may answer them, Lord, in accordance with your divine will. I pray especially for the evangelistic series, oh God, coming up, that you may, oh God, bless our speaker, bless the program, the people that will be coming, oh God, that they will be open in their hearts to receive you, Lord God, the message, the gospel, but through Jesus Christ that they will accept Jesus as their personal Savior and King. Father, forgive us all our trespasses so that we be worthy to receive all the blessings and the blessing of the Sabbath rest. Thank you, God, for everything and for the things that you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to continue asking for more blessings. We are actually asking for the blessing of your presence, the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. And uh, Lord, personally and in our families, we need the experience of 
the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the promise that you are the one who predestined us to be saved. Help us then to accept that invitation, that predestination, and then the grace that you have given us. And then you're also the person who's going to renew our minds. May our response be creating us a new heart, O oh God, and renew the right spirit within us so that when you start working in our lives, people will see Jesus in us, not us. And may you bless the church in such a way that it will represent Christ. Help us, Lord, especially the leaders that we will not so much focus on the activities before us because sometimes the activities before us blur the image of Christ. But help us to put Christ then and then he will be the one who will enable us to perform these activities. Mm. Bless the speaker in such a way that you have said you will be with your people, you will use them. He dedicated himself to you. And he mentioned that it is by grace that he became a pastor. Now, Lord, may we also pray that it is by your grace that he will continue to be a pastor and that he will continue to be used by you. Lord, we pray for those who are listening or those who are praying with us, those who have heard the discussion this morning and those who will be hearing the discussion, remember them, whatever ailments they have, whatever heartaches they have, may they be reminded that Jesus can cure them all even the deepest longing of our longings of our soul can be cured and be filled by Christ. Then, Lord, our desire is to be a blessing to your cause, to be a blessing to your people. Strengthen us, enable us, and when everything is said and done, we would cry, worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was this lane. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Father, for accepting us as your sons and daughters and also making us your servants. Unworthy we may be, but by your Holy Spirit, you will make us worthy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this ministry and for the people who are being blessed through this ministry. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the forgiveness of many sins, and for hearing and answering your prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Once again, thank you so much for joining us for the Sabbath morning mana. Please share the link. Um, I'm sure it blessed you. And if you have friends, family members that need some inspiration, know that we have this. We've been doing all of this midweek meeting as well as Sabbath morning mana, just to share inspiration and the love of Jesus Christ that hopefully all of us will be on fire before God when he comes in the clouds of heaven, that he will find us faithful. God bless you and hope we see you again next Sabbath morning manner.